I'm Kaitia. And I'm Jarrell. Welcome to our podcast where we talk about glowing through life instead of just going through life. It's a his and hers perspective about modern topics and hot button issues from Christians just like you. Well, let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna glow through. Taught me how to do it. Hello guys, welcome back to Glowing Through It. This one is about scaleness and feel. So today, um, I'm showing you guys how to be not afraid of darkness and how to keep getting up. So Today, you don't have to be scared of of monsters anymore. You just defeat them with a prayer. That's easy, but they make it the hard way. The monsters make it the really hard way to do it. So you just need to keep fighting back and really, and really doing fighting back because the monsters make you make it they make it really hard but you can still do it just so you know and it the darkness is not going to defeat you really well not it's not going to defeat to defeat you hello everybody welcome to another episode of glowing through it (laughs) Sorry for the pauses. So this is episode 31. My name is Jarrell Connor, and I'm here with my wife. Kaitia Lamore. And Jarrell was just talking before this about since there's 31 podcast episodes, it's enough for an entire month if you want to listen to one every single day. Or you can just binge them all in one day. Um, but actually, I don't know if you could do that. Some are pretty long. Um, yeah, <laughs> But um, today, I wanted to talk about that four-letter F word. (laughs) Yes, we're going to talk about fear today. So it's something that the media serves a heavy heaping of (laughs) every broadcast, every time they have a report, Um, though they don't necessarily package it that way or tell people, like, hey, we're making you afraid of everything. So... (laughs) We wanted to take a bit of the sting out of that and shine a light on some of the things revolving around or involving fear, because uh, a lot of it's um, kind of circling around our society today, every day, right now. So when thinking about this series, um, I looked at it as a in a practical sense, um, like kind of like how fear is seen in the world and also like looking at scripture and kind of comparing to see like what characters in the bible how they dealt with fear what what fear what was the root of certain fears um that we saw in in well-known bible scriptures and, and things like that so um sometimes fear in the bible and in these accounts it's uh when it's present it's known other times it's very like under the surface and you might not even catch it and and I kind of looked at it through the lens of there's a bunch of fear in all of these different accounts and it's like almost the root of why these certain sins or these certain activities or wickedness uh, manifested in in people's lives so um, before we kind of I guess we pared it down to five categories or five ways that fear can hurt you or creep into your life um but before we get into the five points did you have anything to add at this point my wife well i'm glad we're talking about it because i as we were going over this subject matter and preparing for the podcast i was telling jarell how it's a good subject because a lot of people won't know like oh that that was fear you know that led to this or that's rooted in fear because i saw on my explore page and instagram sometimes i'll have like different people it's like oh the ther- the millennial therapist or oh like the love yourself treat yourself whatever soul care and it'll just be like these different slides that it'll show 
like how to know you're in a toxic relationship, how to know you're trauma bonding. And one of the things recently was like things that are anxiety that you didn't know were anxiety and like scrolling through them. And I was like, this is actually very helpful. So I think fear comes up a lot um, in everybody's life. So from a Christian's perspective, I think it'll be good for people to hear what things they may not have really thought about fear and how to get rid of that. So I'm glad you're bringing it up. Point. Uh, as am I. Because I think as, as being a Christian, does that make sense? As being a Christian. <laughs> so being a Christian. Oh, no. mm-mm. Uh, it is, it definitely impacts our world view of everything and how we kind of process things. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, through Facebook uh went to school with him years ago he was in i think he was an atheist so he definitely didn't believe in god and now he's kind of like coming around to it and he's asking a lot of questions uh, and so he did like leave a lot of comments for me um talking about how he could tell like even within his family there when there's christians or if they're going to church certain family members they have a totally different like outlook on life and he could tell like they're they're happier about a lot of things they they deal they don't deal with fear in the same way they're not really you could see that there was something different and he kind of expressed that to me in in our relationship and how he he talked about it so I do think it's it's good to look at this from a biblical standpoint Um, I didn't really look at a lot of like clinical trials and and um psychological test or anything i kind of looked at things that i see existing today and then comparing and contrasting things in the bible so let's just jump into them um these are five things they could be habits or outlooks or thoughts that uh you or people have that you didn't know were rooted in fear and it can easily be things that are holding you back in any and potentially every area of your life right this minute. So um, the first one I have is fear of missing out. Obviously, the trending word that had been going around was FOMO. And they use it for like, oh, people are going out to a party and you're, you're missing out because you saw them post about it or something. But um, the way I, I think this is applied is a little different. Um I go, I'm going to go have a scripture for every one of these uh, five. Did you say, I'm going to go have a scripture? I'm going to go, and I think it was, I'm going to have, but it got <laughs> lost in the interwebs. Uh, so Adam, there's going to be a scripture for each of these. The first one deals with the fear of missing out on something. Uh, it deals with the account from the garden in Genesis 3, 5 with Adam and Eve. So many of you, and I'm going to keep these scripture references pretty short, so this won't be a super long video or audio, but um, a lot of people are familiar with that account with Adam and Eve being tempted by the serpent, and it wasn't an apple. I don't know why everybody want to say apple. Stop saying the apple. It was an apple tree. It's not an apple tree. Because <laughs> if it was an apple tree, then why everybody eating the forbidden fruit today <laughs> and making like cider with it and There's stuff? Like 5,000 versions of apple. So, yeah, that's not what it is. Um, But when they were being tempted, God had told them, don't eat this. Like, of everything you can do in all the whole world and own it, there's just two things you don't do. Eat from these two trees, and this was the forbidden, the one of knowledge and um, knowledge of good and evil. So the devil comes to them. He's basically saying, like, hey, you can have this. Sorry, that's our daughter. She's Eating eating a uh, very loud bag of pretzels. <laughs> Sound like sun chips. I was just going to say, at least it's not sun chips. <laughs> so um, he came to them and basically was saying like, well, did God really say this? And the quote is, you will be like God. So the whole, I guess, crux of the thing for them was we could be missing out. We could say like, God said that we would die, but if we actually get this hidden knowledge, if we can become more like him, like we would miss out. Like, what if we don't take this deal? What if we don't take this offer? And it's kind of like, that's the kind of way that I saw this scripture, which I I didn't really see before. It was always like the pride uh, of life and the lust of ha- wanting more. But the, the root of their wanting to do that 
can be traced to fear where they didn't want to miss out on something they could have potentially have. And this is something that, that casinos pride on, the lottery prides on. It's like, oh, if you don't play, you can't win. It's just one more like ticket or one more uh, roll or pull of the lever at the slot machine because it could be that thing that's going to pay off and you have a fear that's like crippling you because you want to just like get that thing because if you don't go one more step you'll never know if you could have had this uh, like unattainable thing um so do you want to like comment on these as i go through the five yeah probably briefly okay. but yeah i think um because that because that is the main thing that is daunting sometimes about like well what like what made this person make this decision like nowadays you know we think about that and then even back in the biblical days is like what fool like what kind of fool like why would somebody give that up or why would they do that and you think like if I, if it were me you know i would never but then like you were saying figuring out what the root is because that is one of the ones that we talked about with adam and eve is like was it fear was it pride was it this but yeah if they felt like it's worth the risk you know like you were saying with casinos like it's worth the risk if i can have this thing that potentially is there like this dangling carrot in front of me like I can't miss out on that so yeah I think that is something that a lot of people do have I see it all the time and I'm just like man like it's not it's not worth it like you're never it's the ever elusive carrot and you're never gonna get it but the devil uses that strategy all the time yes he does um the second one that I think uh, that I want to talk about is this one has where did it go? I'm looking at my notes. Okay, so this one is about Saul, and it kind of has it can it has two sides, I guess. Um, it's fear of loss and the fear of rejection. Um, they're different, but they have some overlap. With Saul, the first um, scripture that I'm referencing is uh, 1 Samuel 17. Uh, that would be David and Goliath, the, their famous battle. So the reason why this is um, about Saul and his fear, everybody knows, well, most people know, that David, this young little scrawny kid, mm -hmm. faced this giant who was a literal giant, like he was two or three times I like three times maybe bigger than him and no one in the army of Israel would would fight him because they were all scared now Saul was the king and he stood head and shoulders of all over all the people around him he should have been the one to handle Goliath he was the king that was like he shouldn't have been sitting in his tent and like having all the soldiers yeah so he had fear of of loss I believe in this situation where he deferred to this ruddy kid um, who God had actually appointed to be king because Saul forfeited, forfeited everything um, I forget how many years he was a king but recently I, I was reading and I heard that it was like if it was like 40 years that he was alive I forget the amount of years but it was decades and only two of those years did he actually like he, the Lord was with him because pretty early on in his kingdom he strayed and did a bunch of bad stuff so the second point is in first chronicles 10 verses 13 and 14 um in that that's basically when Saul dies um a long life that was the later years was basically him chasing after David afraid of losing um, his kingdom or being rejected by God and um, that's like his latter years was all spent like dealing with that and so this was when he fell on his sword and the Bible talks about he stopped looking to God he stopped um, following God because he was afraid of losing his place and there's a common thing with the with fear in all of these different scriptures is the fear it's really strange because God gives a, a plan and he tells these people, this is what you're going to do to be blessed. Like, this is the best plan that I have for you. Like, this is the best. <laughs> and the, whatever crack or 
temptations or things that come in through fear are questioning what God said. And in every time it's about getting them off of the course, off the path of God, and that is their ultimate downfall. Um, and that's like a common thing that happens in each of these kind of cases. Did you have anything? Okay, the third one, fear of the truth getting out. Uh, so this one is about David in the same David who beat Goliath. Later on in Second Samuel 11, uh, the famous account where he met Bathsheba and then uh, did stuff he wasn't supposed to do. And it led to a lot of things. He, I mean, in the first place, he wasn't even supposed to be home. He was on his roof walking around looking at his kingdom when he should have been at war with his men. So that was his first fault or problem and then later on having these indiscretions with um, this woman who was married and then to cover it up he was afraid of people finding out he was afraid of the truth getting out and he went through so many different hoops to try to get um, her husband which I just saw but I, I forgot his name right now but Bathsheba's husband to to be with her so that they would cover up that she was pregnant or have him go to war and like be away but like everything he tried to cover up ended up being making it worse until he actually was responsible for her husband's death and so <clears throat> instead of the truth setting him free he was under the bondage of trying to cover up something um, and we see that today a lot with um, on the media I think <laughs> is one of the 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 strangest place is to when you when you fact check things and when you kind of research on your own there's so much false falsehood being perpetrated out in the media and on um, social media and the internet news channels it's 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 kind of um unnerving and, and it's like you can't really trust anything you hear that's going out there um and you shouldn't i guess you should always um be uh, diligent in searching and seeking truth out for yourself. So, and I think a lot of that comes to fear in um, people wanting to get a certain thing done, and then they they resort to fear um, because they cover up things that they don't want to get out. Maybe someone has a, a char like a sordid past, and then they don't want the, their reputation to be. Um, damage or there's a candidate running for something and he said something that was wrong but he doesn't want to fess up to it so he's covering up or different things like that there's definitely a fear um, with that um, as well you have anything on that yeah and I think um, that is in, important to note because I know that I've basically I have known <laughs> some compulsive liars and there's like a saying, and I'm going to say it wrong, but I'm going to say it anyways, where it's like, what a tangled web web we weave when at first we do deceive or something like that, where it's like this web of lies. And it's like, well, because I said this, well, now I got to say this. And like, if somebody asked me about it, now I got to come up with this other stuff. And it's like interesting when you know someone like that, where it's just like, wow, like you come up with lies like so fast. And because you're so afraid of the truth getting out, like instead of me just confessing or telling this thing, now I have to have an alibi. Now I have my friend who's has to cover for me. And you're like pulling all this stuff into it, just like Drell was saying with like David. And it's like it was between him and her. Then all of a sudden it's be, like it's bringing in a whole army. It's bringing in, you know, all these all these people that never had to be involved if he just at first kept his eyes to himself and, and wasn't pursuing something that was obviously blatantly wrong to do. So, yeah, once you get outside of God's will and, and choose to sin, like, that's honestly just the, the domino effect of bringing sin into your life. Like, there's so much other sin that has to, to now support that because you chose to do it. Um, but fortunately, there is repentance. That is something that David did. Because I believe he lost the child mm -hmm. he first had with Bathsheba, but he did have another one. But it's just like, man, like the collateral damage of something. And, and that's got to be one of the deepest things about humanity is like the, the guilt and the deep shame and the deep 
trauma that comes from making, you know, decisions that it might seem like it's not going to hurt anybody. You know, doing this, you know, nobody's going to get hurt. And it's like, you don't even know like what's coming, you know, from that decision and who it could literally kill because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, staying in your own lane or even just obeying the Lord. Um, and we've had things not like super major where it caused somebody to die, but definitely we've made decisions and made mistakes in life that we still are undoing um, because it was like, well, this led to that and then that led to that. So now we have to undo this and it costs us this much money. It costs us this much time. You know, it cost us these type of friendships. And, and so it's just like, man, if we just didn't do that, like, oh, it would be like so much better, like just to not have to deal with that and have the, the effects of it. But we live and we learn and hopefully we repent and we move on and we do better. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for that. The, the next one is fear of the unknown or, or thing, fear of things that you don't understand. Uh, there are a lot of people who say that, like there's a common phrase, like fear of the unknown or people fear what they don't understand kind of a thing. And it, the, the reference or the, yeah, the reference for this is a scripture we had been, me and my wife had been reading recently. Um, Numbers 13, and it would be verse 33 specifically, um, but the kind of the whole chapter. Uh, this is the, the account of the spies that went into the promised land uh, that Moses, Moses had sent. And <clears throat> only two of them came back with good reports, and the other ones basically were all afraid. <laughs> they came back in fear. And um, I think, was there 10 spies? Because I know that, 12. yeah, 10 or 12. So that either 10 of them were all in fear. There's like 100. <laughs> <clears throat> so either 10 of them were in fear or eight <laughs> or eight were in fear. And the, the scripture that stood out to me when we were reading this was um, the 10 or the eight, I think it was 10, that were um, afraid they they have a comment that says uh, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes so because in the land that they went there were already people in the land and they were giants they were m bigger than them and they they kept like saying how like they're so much bigger than us and they're this and this but in this like the last line that they have is they they're talking about how they looked in their own eyes um by comparison so they were afraid of this group of people that mind you god had already told them this land is for you this is going to be flowing of milk and honey it's going to be the greatest this it's going to have all of the food and the fruit and all this stuff that's going to be so plentiful bountiful it's going to be amazing and then they go and they acknowledge that it's true all this stuff is what god said and god did tell them that he would give it to them but like I mentioned earlier, the fear crept in of basically once you step out of what God has for you, then you question everything. It's like, well, but there's people there and they're going to kill us and there's no way we could possibly have this land. Yeah, I don't like you told they totally forgot what God had told them. So this happens a lot with people when they step out of God's will or they forget um, what God told them and, and I feel like there's so much in in our walk or in our lives that we let fear creep in when we don't spend time with God because uh, there's a scripture that talks about like um, whose report will you believe are you going to believe like man's report or the world's report or are you going to believe what God said and that's really it, that's the the nuts and bolts of what this is about is it like what are you having faith in because um i've heard it said that fear is not it can be the opposite of faith but also fear itself is faith but it's just faith in the wrong thing you're having faith in what a circumstance looks like are you having faith in what your enemy told you he's going to do or you have faith in what the news report said that there's like doom and gloom and everything's bad <clears throat> but you're not having faith in god and what he promised you so um that's kind of what the overall 
uh, thing that I saw with these five points and how they can relate to our lives today um, through the, the lens of seeing how these different scriptures and these different people in the Bible had these issues and how they faced them. Did you have any? That was all five? Yeah, two of them were in um, one of them. I think Saul covered two. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it, it is important in this time because like Joel was saying, fear of the unknown. I think for me, and I would like you to actually talk um, <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm gonna <laughs> about which one you feel like you have maybe resonated the most with. I'll share mine. You know, first, fear of the unknown for myself um, used to be crippling. Used to be crippling anxiety of just like, oh no, what's gonna happen? Like, I want to know the plan. I want to know A through Z. I want like all of this stuff. So having faith, taking faith steps. Like, there were some times where it was just like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, I'm not this type of person. <laughs> like, getting married and being, you know, engaged in three days and then getting married then moving. Like, there's huge life-altering things that did happen in my life. And I feel like the only times that I was able to take those steps was when I was completely focused on the Lord. Not what anybody else said because there's always, there's always going to be opposition um, to peop- from people who don't understand um, maybe what God is telling you or just from the devil who's constantly planting doubt. So I think for me, being able to remove that doubt and shut out those voices, only I was able to do that through spending that personal time with God, hearing his voice clearly. And then, you know, there's been times where I lost my way and got very distracted and tried to do things myself. And fear of the unknown always made it harder for me to make faith steps and take those leaps that God needed me to. So I think for um, this time in the world, it's like I was doing pretty good, <laughs> you know, until pandemic hit, you know, until people are burning cities to the ground. And it's just like, my goodness, like everything this year is like January. It's looking up like a brand new day. February, we're pregnant. Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. We're bringing a new life into the world. Then everything just <laughs> just fell apart and felt like it was going downhill even to the point where it made me question like was I supposed to get pregnant like and we prayed about it we prayed about this for years like our daughter is six and so it's been a minute until we felt peace about having um, another child and stuff but even with that like with all this stuff crumbling down and I'm like well did we make a mistake like were we not supposed to do this and just feeling so underprepared so overwhelmed, so many changes, so many things obviously you have to do and get in order um, when you're having a whole nother human come into the world and we're homeschooling our daughter and doing all this paperwork and just getting things together. And it's just like, man, um, I personally, even now, currently have to daily basically just say, I trust you, Lord. Like, because like Drell was mentioning with the the spies and he's like I'm sending you there because I'm showing you what I've already given you yes you'll have to go in battle you won the battle like let's just say I have a time machine and I was there and I saw you win it like basically that's God because he's outside of space and time it's done and I think for us you know I have to keep remembering like the the promises we're believing for the things that are already on the way I've just had to be like well you know if the Lord got me pregnant if he did this and that he's obviously got a plan and he's not just gonna have me you know out there you know blowing in the wind he has my back and he's shown that in these past several months every single day that he's got my back and there's just been amazing miraculous things happening in our life and things that we'll share more of later but it's just like wow through in all the times in all the land like this is the time that God is just like I'm pouring out this blessing I'm pouring out this gift I'm pouring out this miracle and we're just like okay Lord you know we see you we feel you we hear you and we need that because it's a little scary out in these streets it's, it's a little shaky out in these streets so for you Jarrell like what do you feel might be the type of underlying fear that you, even if you've overcome it, like that you might have dealt with in the past or tries to creep up now? Nothing. I'm afraid of nothing. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Looking at this list, um, it probably would have to be the fear of the unknown as well. Uh, it's not something that, like, that I feel like I deal with now or even had come up often. But, like, thinking about it after you asked or told me that you are going to ask me this was, um, like, looking back, that's kind of the thing that that stood out with various points and benchmarks and times in my life where there was a things didn't kind of work out how I saw God laying out a plan like God said this is going to happen or you're going to have this or you're going to do that and then time went by and it was like okay this is looking like it's going the opposite (laughs) direction than what uh, I heard so is that true uh, did I mess it up or did did I hear it wrong or did is the enemy attacking me and that's why this happened or is God testing me and it's like there are so many questions it's like just like an unknown place where I, and that's not a place that is never pleasant or comfortable and and I think that's where I was like I just don't want to mess up or do this wrong or miss what God has because I know he's real and I know that he's moving me he's moving us in a certain path and then when things didn't like line up it's like what is this unknown place (laughs) that we're sitting in how long are we going to be in there and and why kind of a thing so I feel like that was something that that had been a big struggle just trying to wrap my head around what what was going on and I couldn't make heads or tails of it so it's like being very uncertain and unsure Um, because for me it 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 wasn't really I guess growing up and having um, needing a lot of faith for certain things like okay I'm not I'm on a completely different path than a lot of my peers and all these different things and all that's kind of seeking God about choices to make and if that's like relatively normal to me and like having faith in God to provide then when it's like whoa where am I right now where this thing is not like I thought it was and I think there was fear connected to just like how did it get there and I couldn't do anything to get it out of there kind of a thing so that about wraps up that um did want to close with uh, I think I had one last point that um because i talked about like a couple minutes ago that uh fear is kind of faith in the wrong thing um and every account of carnal fear that you can see in the bible or in people's lives around you are things that are taking people away from god um but the bible does say that there is a good kind of fear um a biblical or godly fear is and this is from proverbs 1 7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So this fear of God is, some people, I I feel like they don't get what this means, but for me, it definitely means a reverential fear that you respect God, that you trust him, and that you're not like rebelling because you have a respect and a reverence for him. It's not a, oh, I think God's going to strike me down. I'm scared. I'm going to look over my shoulder because God's going to take me out kind of a thing. Because that's not, um, God doesn't do that to his children. So um, just a proper context of what the biblical kind of fear is. Um, So I hope that helps somebody out there. Um, Because I know fear is something that a lot of people are dealing with. I think we're all kind of dealing with it in some way uh, with everything going on in the world. Um, But if you don't have anything, I'll just close this out in prayer. All right. Thank you, Lord, for this time and for this podcast today. I do believe that you um, want to do away with fear. This uh, carnal, worldly fear is crippling to to the world. It's crippling to people. It's crippling even to your your children who buy into it or allow it to creep in. Um, your word says that there's no fear in love and you are love so there's no fear in you there's no fear that we should have in this place like there's nothing that could 
that we should be afraid of. Nothing can harm us, Lord, when we are following you and we're under your protection. And we just pray that you help everybody out there who's listening to this, help them to um, be delivered from fear. If there's any fear that they're grappling with right now, help them to, to see and feel your comfort and turn to you, not to man's devices to save themselves or save the world. Lord, it's not going to work. It's, it's you that we need to turn to. And when we turn to ourselves or to mankind for the answers, we'll always come up short. So we just pray that uh, there'll be a proper context and a proper understanding of what you want people, uh, how they should live, and for the plan that you have, the amazing purpose that you have for each of us, Lord. Uh, we pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you guys for listening today, and um, we'll catch you on the next one. If you guys uh, want to support, we do appreciate any prayers, any comments, any shares, um, getting the word out um, about these podcasts, if it's any, if you know of anyone that this could impact or help. Um, but also if you want to help financially, you can do so through paypal.me slash Kaitia Lamore. And... Um, then she'll be able to receive any of your gifts or any uh, support you want to bring or give. Uh, and we appreciate all of it. Um, so I pray that you guys are blessed. Uh, we will catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye. You guys, thank you for having this um, this next video. Uh, oh, Glowing Through It, thank you for watching Glowing Through It. I mean, hearing Glowing Through It, the next episode of Feel Not Being Scaled. And bye, thank you so much. And give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. This is the